Hello there, and welcome back to the show. In our last episode, we'd started building our bridge here, uh, but we pretty much only had time to do the top half, so today uh, it indicated that we were going to go ahead and finish the bottom half. So we'll get started with that, and since it's actually been a few days since I've been able to log on, you can walk around and see some of the changes that Squishy's been doing in the meantime. So let me march my butt over here. It'll take just a minute. And I think what I'm going to do this time is build the scaffolding across the water first, since for whatever reason I didn't do that the last time and it made it infinitely more difficult to put this underside on. So we're going to go ahead and do that first. And I think we'll actually put that at this level because putting it at water level seems to make it even more difficult to reach as high as we need to reach. So first things first, we build our scaffolding here. Come on. Wow, coming back to this after taking a break for a week is more challenging than I thought it would be. And I'm also going to note that we may have a guest star on our show today. My husband is logged in. My daughter is kind of hanging out over at his base right now, so we can go out and check on them once we finish the underside of the bridge here. I might have to make more wood here. I might have just enough to do the scaffolding and not the bridge itself. I was not counting on that. I forgot how long this thing is. Yeah, don't try that. <laughs> what are you guys doing over there? Turning my waterfall. Did you try to turn Daddy's base into a waterfall again? Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, you didn't turn his base into a waterfall, you just turned his yard into a waterfall. I see. Well then, what did you turn into a waterfall? <laughs> hey, it could be worse, it could be lava. <laughs> okay. Alright, now that we have our scaffolding, what we want to do is come up here and count how far across this bridge is. Oh, hey! There's one of Katie's color changing sheep. And I can definitely, if you've never done that before, I can show you how to do that here in a minute too. It was pretty entertaining when we figured that out the other day. Alright, let me try to do this the easy way. So. Okay, 69. Let's see how well I can do math today without actually sitting here and counting every single brick. And 10, so that's 59. trying to decide how many legs we want on this bridge. Each one's going to be five bricks wide, so we want spaces in between. Well, let's do our two end ones first and then we'll see what we have left over. So the way that I did these is okay. We come down here and actually wait a minute. 
I'm missing something over here. What am I missing? Ah, okay, I know what I did. Oh, I'm not in creative mode. Yes, I'm in survival mode. Thank you, Katie. Okay. So now that we've done that, we take our stairs. And we come across here. And then we do the row above that. And it gives us a decorative start there. Then... Oop, that one didn't go in right. There we go. Okay. Okay, then we come over here with our wood. Actually, wait a minute. We're gonna... Wow, I swear I've done this before. <laughs> I'm not breaking the bridge, I'm building the bridge, believe it or not. Okay. Because we're going to have a set of these stairs here. Oop. Really should have brought an axe with me, jeez. This would have been so much easier. No, I don't have an axe in my inventory. I have a pickaxe in my in inventory, but that's different. Okay. So we have that set of stairs there, and then we come down here, actually that's wrong too, come down here, put a second row of wood, yep, try not to fall off the cliff in the process, come on, there we go. There we go. Okay. And wow. Oh, there we go. I was going to say, I thought I put that scaffolding up high enough. Okay, so we should be able to come up here and put another row of stairs. So it's kind of starting to take shape there and looking kind of pretty. So we'll come here and bring this leg down here. This is going to be the actual leg itself. We're not going to add any more stairs. And this part's really personal preference, how far down you want to extend it. If you want to stop it at scaffolding level or if you want to go down into the water. It's entirely personal preference. And then the side here. We've got the middle of our leg, and then we've got three rows of stairs. So we're going to come over here and put three more rows. Come on. This isn't strictly necessary, but I need to get back up here. There we go. Okay. Now I remember to hit the sneak button. Come on. There we go. Oh, 
Okay. So now that we're we've got those done, man, these stairs do not want to cooperate today. There's the first row and the second row. Come on. And the third row. If it will cooperate. About to just call this Murphy's Law episode because it's just not working the way I want it to. Okay, so there's our first leg. And then what we basically do is, well actually, I need to do this first so I can get back up here. Um, basically we want to skip space there. And I would say, put our stairs here. Come on, there we go. And then, basically, whoa! Try not to drown. <laughs> Hang on, let me grab this stair over here. I will when I'm done doing what I'm doing. Just give me a minute. And then once again, we come in here with our wood. I really thought building that scaffolding up higher than the last time would have made it easier to do, but apparently not. That's too far back. And I actually had coffee this time. That's the funny part. Actually, I don't think I'm going to sit and do this whole thing for you today because it's going a bit slower than I thought it would, but you get the general idea here. We have our three sets of stairs there for a little bit of decoration. And then we put our middle of our leg in. Actually, in this case, I'm going to need to get down there and... Actually, no, I don't. I can just do this. I'm going to have some scaffolding to clear up afterwards, but otherwise... It works out. Uh, but what I will show you, rather than like, r r like I said, rather than going all the way across and doing all of our legs, um, I will show you the last little bit of decoration here. You basically just come across the top here with your fences, and you may need to build a secondary scaffolding for this one too. So I'm not entirely sure we're going to be able to reach. Um, and then what I did, if I can find them, is put some torches 
somewhere in the middle here. And then when you back up, it looks pretty nice. Uh, like I said, since we've got such a large bridge here, I'm not going to barrel on finishing that on the video today. We'll, we'll go ahead and finish it off camera and you can see the finished product. Again, basically just going to look like this one. Uh, but what we will do is come over and take a look at our farm because Squishy's been on doing a lot while I was in the hospital having her little brother. So I haven't quite been in the know about what's going on at, at our base or anything else and kind of hoping I don't have any waterfalls in my front yard right now or inside my house anywhere. These poor chickens are everywhere. She just went nuts with the eggs. Chicken. Yeah, we have a bunch of chickens because you went nuts throwing eggs everywhere. No, just chicken. Oh, chicken. yeah, you're finding chickens everywhere too. One thing I'm aware that she did end up doing was after we had substantially grown our, our sheep and our cows and picked up some pigs as well, she gone through and, and broken down the gates in between, so now we just have this massive cluster of animals. And actually, one of my favorite things to do right now, just because it's absolutely hilarious, is, since I don't have any of these in my inventory, I'm going to grab one. Just for some reason, I find this insanely amusing. Come on. I'm in creative mode. I should be able to fly. There we go. Okay. Come on. I know I'm pushing the right button. Alright. Yeah, one of my favorite things to do is just come hover over here with carrots because the rabbits just go insane. Somehow Katie got her hands on a rabbit spawner and just went nuts. So that's really kind of funny to just sit here and hover and, and, and watch them just go crazy. Uh, and then one thing that I said I would show you also while we're over here is how to create a color changing sheet. Uh, if you're at all familiar with name tags, really all you do is you take your name tag over to your anvil, type in exactly the characters that you see there, J-E-B underscore, and then apply the name tag to the sheep of your choice, and it makes them change colors. I can go ahead and, since I'm in creative mode, I'll come down here and do that for you. Uh, what we did find out through a little bit of experimentation is when you breed them, ours all came out white regardless of, of what color they were to begin with. We are kind of starting to branch off our staircase here and put some new rooms and things in just to kind of spruce up our base. And then we've got our words of the day, or, well, probably longer than the day. I think it's going to take Katie a little while longer to learn how to spell little brother than a day, but we'll get the hang of it. Uh, but okay, here's my anvil. Let me grab a name tag here. It's just so much easier to do it this way. So you grab your name tag and you put it in your anvil. And I want to do lowercase. Pretty sure it makes a difference. And then we come back upstairs. Wow, this is taking a lot longer than I thought it would. Everything just seems to be moving in slow motion today. 
All right. So we come over here to our sheet, we right click on it, and voila! And so now we've got, I think we've got like three or four of them floating around in there somewhere. Like I said, it really doesn't make too much of a difference as far as shearing. I th think we haven't done that yet. Let me go ahead and One thing we haven't done is shear them to find out what color their wool comes out. I'm gonna assume white since Sorry. that's what our baby sheep came out color wise, but we'll see. And I'm gonna do this real quick too to make it easier to get in and out of here. Okay, so where's our color changing sheep here? Nope, comes out white. So that answers that question. So it's really more for visual appeal than any practical purpose as far as making them change colors. Um, I'm trying to think what else I can show you here. Katie kind of created her own little base outside. Which she actually kind of showed off in her own little episode previously. She's got a couple of beds in here for her and mommy and daddy and of course a chest full of random stuff. Which is totally awesome that she figured out how to put buttons on there to open the doors. What does she have going on over here? random blocks of redstone, it looks like. Why? I'm not entirely sure. Giant hole full of water. Yep. <laughs> rather glad that's outside rather than inside the base. Um, oh, I know what else I can show you guys today. We actually... What I thought was going to be a good idea and preventing me from getting my butt caught on fire and dying and losing all of my inventory actually turned into a colossal, colossal project here. But it is something that I highly recommend doing, especially if you're in survival mode and, and trying to fight mobs and not die. Um, Basically, we started carrying buckets of water when we did our mining. Simply because we have this reputation between my husband and I of falling into pits of lava and losing everything. So what we would do is we'll take the, the water down here and pour it on the lava. And of course, once you do that, it, it turns it into obsidian. Well... If you do that enough times with the same bucket of water, you end up with a giant lake of obsidian. In this case, this is actually the second layer on top here. We've got a third layer down there, and I've already completely cleared out the first layer, which provided us, I think, with somewhere in the realm of ten stacks of obsidian. Um, already made one gate. Uh, we, we might actually make some interconnecting gates in the nether. But when I say it, it, it turned into more of a project than I thought it would be. We'll, we'll come down here to the end of our mines. And I've actually started doing quite a lot of strip mining here. And we actually found a nice little cavern here, which has some stuff in it, not too terribly much. There was a little bit of lava in here that we cleared up. See, there's more obsidian over there now. Um, got qu quite a lot of materials that can come through here and mine later on. Not that we don't already have quite a stock getting built up in our chest room. But... Oh, I came through on the wrong level. 
And we're going to drop down here, and I'll show you. Uh, got quite a lot of lava here, and, and there's a little flow there. But we've got just this giant, ridiculous amount of lava that I think it, this took like one bucket of water. I just kept dropping it and picking it up and dropping it and picking it up. And ended up with this giant mound of obsidian that can't really see it now, but it's actually like four layers deep. <laughs> so we're we're pretty stocked up on obsidian. I'm not gonna go pulling any of that out right now because it is pretty much going to turn into lava the second that I do. Um, which actually, that top layer won't. I think I still have a bucket of water, too. So we'll kind of... Oh, cool. I have wool, too. This will work. We'll come up here and, and do this top one and give you an idea if you don't know how how to stop the lava come on there we go one of Katie's many thousands of bats that she has spawned okay yep so we've got lava there Drop our water there, pick it back up, and voila! More obsidian! <laughs> and believe me, I've, I've sat here for hours mining this stuff, and it after a while it, it just gets... Mom, are you in the same one? What do you mean am I in the same one? The same yes, I'm in the same Minecraft game as you are. But yeah, after a while it just kind of gets tiring going through and mining it all out. Especially when, at this point, I have no idea what we're going to use it for. If anybody has any suggestions, feel free to leave a comment for us and we'll take it into consideration. Uh, I'm pretty much open to anything at this point because, like I said, I've, I've got like 10 stacks of it. Never in all my life did I think I was going to wonder what the hell I was going to do with so much obsidian, but that's kind of where we're at at this point. And then one other thing I wanted to show you today. Come on. I thought I was running. There we go. Uh, my husband actually showed me how to build a pumpkin farm. So, see, more more obsidian, more lava. It, it just gets it redundant after a while. Kind of hoping eventually I can convince Katie to turn the bad guys on. It will make this a little bit more entertaining. But for right now, she's kind of skittish around them. She doesn't really like the sounds. Uh, so we come up here, and the way that we did this, I'm not going to tear it apart or anything. The way that we did this is we alternated regular plain old good old fashioned pistons with glowstone that I actually I did go through our little portal there and bring all this glowstone dust back and, and make the glowstone myself. This was entirely done in survival mode. Um, went through and you alternate your pistons with your glowstone. Put a row of dirt in front. Put a row of water in the middle. Daddy just catched the fire. Daddy caught on fire. What was Daddy doing that he caught on fire? <laughs> Did you put the lava there? No. Okay. I'm going to come over and take a look in a minute. Uh, but as you can see, underneath your row of water, right at the end, you want to put a hopper. And what you do is behind your pistons here and your glowstone, you have a row of redstone dust that you put down on both sides. 
And you can pretty much make this as long as you want. Mine's fairly small because I've also got a stack of pumpkin pies going already, so not being in legitimate survival mode where I have to keep eating all the time, kind of building up chestfuls of food that aren't going to get used. So made a relatively small one here. But, I mean, adding in repeaters every so often, you can pretty much make this fairly long. But what you do is you bring your redstone over, put a lever in between, and when you flip the lever, it activates the redstone, which activates the pistons, which pushes your pumpkins into the water. And you want to make sure that you grow your pumpkins in front of your glowstone, not in front of your pistons. Otherwise, the pistons will push the seeds out and you will get your seeds back rather than your pumpkins. And then underneath your, your hopper, you have a chest. And you just come in and grab your pumpkins as you will. And we're going to come up and put all this stuff away. And try to find where everybody else is. We've kind of started to clear this out a little bit. Make it a little bit easier to get down to the mine. Uh-huh. We did find a dungeon, uh, which is where we got our first two name tags that we used on our first two color-changing sheep. Uh, however, at this point in time, I do not remember the coordinates for that, so it would take quite a bit of getting lost down there to find it. Dad, I'm coming to and the Squishy has been playing with the map. Awesome. Well, I'm going to have to fix that at some point in time. Not really in the mood to do cartography right now. And at some point, I promise we will go over there and fix up that village. That's something I've been wanting to do for quite a while. I just kind of look forward to that being a longer episode. Because there's, there's a lot of work that needs to be done to that village. So, we're, we're going to hold off on that one for today. Where did I put... Ah, there's a... Yeah, the, look at all of the obsidian here. Between the obsidian and the coal and the redstone, we're, we're pretty good. We've got a stack of diamonds, and these... Seriously, these are legitimately survival mode. Hardcore between the Fortune 2 on the pickaxe. Uh, and really insanely good luck. We actually legitimately found those. All the emeralds were legitimately survival mode the iron. Um, none of that was generated from creative mode. Uh, so we'll come up here and put just about everything away. Oh, I don't need these shears either. Oops, come on. The only problem with my chest room is that I didn't make enough room to move. Okay. So, trying to think of any changes that I'm aware of that I can show off here. Otherwise, how we ended up with golden apples, I have no idea. Why carrots and apples are in here, I have no idea. There we go. Alright. I have no idea what we're going to do with that golden apple, but okay. Probably should make some bread and throw it in there, too. And that, actually, for now, is pretty much all we have for you. Like I said, we've had some stuff going on personally, so we haven't been able to do too much here. I'm thinking in our next episode we will go over and fix up that village. Uh, but for today I I had said that I'd show off how to do the bottom of that bridge, so I want to make sure I did that. Um, outside of that, being that we haven't really had time to do too much of anything, like I said, other than strip mining and, and peeling up a lot of that obsidian, uh, we'll go ahead and end the show for today. Uh, we do appreciate you tuning in. I hope you have a wonderful day. And like I said, next time if you want to tune in with us, we're going to be heading over and fixing up our village.